Hello, my name is Aline. I've been studying topics about computer architecture for my master's at Federal University of Paraná. And today I'm going to present part of my research called Machine Learning Migration for Efficient Near Data Processing. Uh, the motivation of this research is the huge amount of data generated in the last decades. In this context, Gantz et al. studies expected 40 trillion gigabytes of data for 2020. And such amount of data cannot be analyzed by us humans. So, machine learning applications became highly used due to its ability to learn from past data, to classify, trace patterns, and predict future data. The problem is that this kind of application may be computational and memory consuming. And that's why sometimes a conventional x86 CPU may, be, may present low computational performance since it follows the von Neumann paradigm, which determines that a processing module will constantly communicate with a memory module through a bus. First of all, accessing the memory device constantly is not the fastest activities. Second, data movement is responsible for consuming 62% of the total system energy. And to overcome this bottleneck, there are different architectures focused on accelerating processing, such as GPUs, ASICs, FPGAs, and the new near data processing. All of them are competitive options to achieve high performance. On the one hand, the GPU is the accelerator most frequently used to, to execute machine learning algorithms, while the FPGA and ASIC are really good options when we want to focus on a specific proposed algorithm uh, solution. On the other hand, near data processing is a new approach, and as many researchers already focused to analyze these other architectures, in this work, we decide to evaluate near data processing to, to explore its possibilities. In this context, near data processing started to be commercialized recently, and it brings a processing module to the same ship of the memory device, reducing data movement and then reducing execution time and consuming lower energy. The module can stack up to eight layers of DRAM memory, on top of a logical layer, and it's partitioned at 32 volts. Each volt is composed of up to 16 DRAM banks connected through to silicon vias, and each one executes independent atomic instructions, since each volt has a memory controller at the logical layer, and this layout allows a highly parallel execution. The near data processing module communicates with the CPU through the serial links and the data is received by the crossbar switch and sent to the vaults in parallel. Considering this architecture, we developed the vectoring memory architecture, or VIMA, which is a module attached to the crossbar switch and allows vector execution only. The idea was to focus on algorithms that execute huge amount of data and make certain data reels. VIMA allows the execution of vectors of 256 bytes and 8 kilobytes, and its instruction set architecture was based on ARM Neo. VIMA module is composed of a VIMA sequencer, which will receive VIMA instructions from the CPU and send the stacks back, vector functional units, which will execute the VIMA instructions, and a small cache memory, which will store the most used data vectors at a time. So, if the data to be executed is not stored in the cache, it's fetched from the vault's banks. As Vima is not a prototyped chip, we had to simulate it. To this research, we have used ORCS, a trace-driven, cycle-accurated simulator, developed in our laboratory to evaluate the chosen machine learning applications. Our methodology was to implement these applications with Intrinsic's Vima, a library that we developed in C, C++ that emulates Vima ISA. The idea is to get its binary code to generate simulation traces with a binary instrumentation tool, which will insert Vima assembly instructions that are understood by the simulator, that will return the architectural results of the correspondent applications. So now I'm going to explain the implementation of the three chosen kernels. K nearest neighbors, multilayer perceptron, and convolution.
starting with canary's neighbors. This algorithm classifies data considering the minimum distance between k points in an n-dimensional space. To do so, a database of training instances stored in memory should be calculated with the test instance. In this case, we are calculating the Euclidean distance to classify the test instance. In VIMA, we can vectorize data, and if an instance is bigger than a VIMA vector, it can be split in more vectors to operate the whole instance. To operate the Euclidean distance, except by the square root, all the remaining instructions are available in VIMA ISA. Case the instance is smaller than the VIMA vector, we store as many instances fit in a vector, and then we apply a mask on it to get an instance at a time to operate each test instance with the whole training data set. The idea in isolating the instance in the whole vector is to keep the most part of the map vectorized. For example, we have to perform a vector accumulated sum before classifying data. So, if there is only one instance stored on it, it will require less data transformations. For multi-layer perceptual algorithm, we have a plain neural network, where we are considering just the inference stage. So, an instance passed through the layer should be evaluated with the training parameters to be classified or to indicate the most relevant features. A neural network can be seen as an operation between a vector and a matrix, where the vector is the input layer and the matrix is the set of weights that will be operated with the input values. In VIMA, the operations to classify an instance in neural network are the dot of products between the input layer and each set of weights, followed by the addition between partial results with a bias, and finally applying the activation function. In this case, we use the real loop, so we use a max vector function to get only positive values in the hidden layer. As the k-nearest neighbor's algorithm, here the instances are isolated from each other when they are smaller than the VIMA vector, to allow perform the whole method with VIMA functions. Finally, the convolution algorithm slides a set of filters in an image to get different activation maps to extract the most relevant features. The implementation with VIMA consecutively operates vectors inside the 3x3 window, obtaining a sequence of partial operations. In this case, these values are all added, and in the end of the operation, the result vector is multiplied by a factor. And to evaluate these algorithms, we implemented two versions of them, one with 8 kilobyte VIMA vectors and the other with AVX 512 Intel Intrinsics. For each algorithm, use specific parameters with a range of data between 133 kilobytes and 512 megabytes. The simulator is based on an Intel SandBridge processor with a last level cache of 16 megabytes and a 3D stacked memory as a main memory. The cache size here is important because when the memory footprint of the algorithm is larger than it, Vima presents higher performance when compared to x86 architecture. So now I'm going to present the results. For k nearest neighbors, the x-axis represents the number of features tested and the y-axis represents the relative difference between Vima and x86 architecture. The bars in yellow represent the speed up or slowdown of Vima over x86 and the bars in orange represent the energy gains or losses of Vima over x86 architecture. As I mentioned before, Vima achieves higher performance when the algorithm's memory footprint exceeds last level cache size, which occurs in the case highlighted in the yellow window. At this point, x86 cache hierarchy cannot make proper data reuse and start to replace cache lines more frequently, increasing data fetching latency. Here, in the best case, Vima has a speed up of 10 times over x86 and spends 7 times less energy. For the next algorithms, I'm going to show just the cases larger than the last level cache because we already know that values below that have no speed up or energy gains in Vima. 
And after observing these results, we can conclude that k nearest neighbors is a quadratic algorithm, since each test instance has to be calculated with the whole training data set. So as the number of instances and the number of features increases, higher is the algorithm's memory footprint. Let's check the multilayer perceptual algorithm. Again, we have the number of features on x-axis and the relative difference between Vim and x86 architecture on y-axis. The bars in blue represent the speed up of Vim over x86, and the pink ones represent the energy gains or losses of Vim over x86 architecture. First of all, the number of instances does not have influence over the memory footprint in the multilayer perception as it has in k-nearest neighbor algorithms. Here, only the number of features determines the algorithm memory's footprint. That's why the graphic growth curve is slower, since it takes longer to exceed 16 megabytes of data. In the best case, Vima is 11 times faster than x86 and up to 8 times more economic than x86 in energy. After observing these results, we can conclude that the neural network takes longer to achieve significant results if compared to k-nearest neighbors because of the way it access data in memory and because only the number of features influence in increasing algorithm's memory footprint. For example, as the number of weight sets is proportional to the number of features, the less features, the less weights, which allows fair data reuse. However, the more features, the more weights, so the algorithm behaves as a streaming. Finally, the convolution algorithm. On x-axis, we have the data size in megabytes, and on y-axis, we have the relative difference between Vim and x86 architecture. The blue bars represent the speed up of Vima over x86, and the purple ones represent the energy gains of a Vima over x86 architecture. In this case, we don't have a clear pattern since the values fluctuate, and we can observe that Vima is three times faster than x86 architecture and two times more energy efficient. This pattern occurs because the convolution makes fair data reuse of cache in x86 architecture. For example, considering a filter of 3x3, three, three, three matrix lines are going to be read, resulting in 3 misses and 6 hits. If we slide the filter to the right, it will result in 9 cache hits. And if we slide down the filter, it will result in 1 cache miss and 8 cache hits. So, if we want this convolution to have a worse performance in x86 architecture, just a matrix line must have the less level cache size. But right now, with the greatest matrix size we have tested, the matrix line occupies 44 kilobytes. So it's far from having a bad performance in x86 architecture. After performing those tests, our final considerations are that Vim is an accelerator. So not all algorithms will achieve higher performance when executed on it. Besides, we evaluate machine learning applications here, but any application that executes a huge amount of data and accumulates a considerable memory footprint during execution can benefit from Vima. And also, it will depend on the complexity of the algorithm and on its memory access pattern. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. And you can send any question or observation if you want to Aline Santana Cordeiro at gmail.com.